Sophia, lovely to see you. And you're coming at last. For many, it didn't feel like a normal drop off this morning. Hugs and kisses were tinged with excitement as the youngest in this school made a staggered return. And parents just couldn't wait to wave them off. What do you feel about the numbers of kids coming back? Is that comfortable for you? I've got absolutely no concerns. Um, the, the school have been phenomenal. Um, they've put everybody at ease. Um, the protocols are very, very stringent. Um, and I think uh, if you look at it based on a balance of risk, I think it's, it's more important for the children to be back at school. It's, it's not the same at home. They're, you feel you're kind of battling against them to do work and things like that, and it's not fair because it's, it's not natural. How different was that school drop-off to any other school drop-off you've had? Well, I think that one was really special because I think you could see the smiley faces on the children and the parents because I think this time round the parents are absolutely desperate to get the children back. Not much has changed for kids in school. Hand sanitizers at most entry points and two metre social distance signs everywhere. But for adults this time, they have COVID tests that they can take home with them to check if they're virus free. The youngest pupils aren't the only ones going back to school in Scotland today. There are limited numbers of senior secondary students allowed to go in to complete work for exams. It's similar in Wales, with children aged three to seven back in class. In Northern Ireland, there'll be a staggered return from the 8th of March. In England, all children are expected to go back on the same date. But there's still concern from teachers unions that schools are returning too quickly without a change in COVID circumstances, a point I put to the First Minister. Are you being cautious enough with kids at the moment? We think we've got very limited headroom given where the R number is, um, but we think that headroom is sufficient to allow uh, what has happened today. You could see the smiles on their faces today, not just from the children, but also from parents as well. They want to know when all kids can be back. But for these lucky ones in school, they're happy to return. I'm really excited because um, I get to see my friends. Fast and Freddy, happy to be back at school. The First Minister says she'll review schools again at the beginning of March, with the hope of more year groups being added later. I should tell them. Well, the tourism industry, hit hard by the pandemic, will be relieved that people in England may be allowed to take summer holidays this year, with hotels allowed to reopen by mid-May at the earliest, and even the prospect of travel overseas. But in the meantime, losses will carry on mounting. Our Home Affairs correspondent Andy Davis has been to Western Supermare, where there are high hopes of getting back to business again. Western Supermare was bathed in sunshine today but still shut to the tourists its economy so craves. Not far from the redundant pier lies the Royal Hotel, open only to key workers. For owner Julie Yarni and her daughter Carly, the year has brought a heavy financial burden. Are you managing to stay afloat? Just. Yeah. With loans. Yeah. You've taken on a fair bit of debt? Just. Yeah. We need a good summer. From what you're hearing, do you think you're going to get that summer? We've got to be optimistic. I don't think we can allow ourselves to think it's not going to work. With their garden, the prospect of a possible outdoor food and drink service in April offers hope, they say. For restaurant owner Chris Dimitriou, it might not be until May before he can open inside. But the cautious approach is one he favours. It's not good rushing for two, three weeks and then back to square one again. Numbers are up, another lockdown, throw away barrels of beers, food. I would say not to rush it. I know some people would not like my idea, but not to rush it. A fourth lockdown, I don't like it. Nobody wants another lockdown. Uh, that would be disastrous for the whole economy, let alone that of Western Supermare. But for the tourism sector here, with little now to expect from Easter, the pressure is on for the summer to deliver. All of these poor businesses have been locked down for so long. Um, I don't know how many of them are surviving. Some are, some are struggling, but it is going to be absolutely essential. So we're hoping that we're going to be really ready and we're going to have lots of people come, but we're going to have to control things still. Essential also said UK hospitality today would be more financial support. 
Businesses, they said, were only just clinging on to existence, while in Western, they cling to hopes of a resurgent summer season. And what would it mean to you to have that hotel fully occupied again? Oh, oh amazing. Can't Absolutely wait. Absolutely amazing. Can't wait. Optimism tempered by caution in a beleaguered economy desperate to regain momentum.